Last year at Rainbow Straight Rhythm, it was a, a new concept for everybody, uh, including myself. So it was a fun, unique race. It was cool because, you know, you only had to worry about beating one person. So, um, you know, I just had to, you know, beat the guy next to me. So it was nice to be able to come out on top. The first ever open class champ of Rainbow Straight Rhythm is James Stewart. It looked awesome, you know, it looked like a hell of a fun place. And, you know, I've never seen anything like that before since. <laughs> More than looking forward to to ride it this year. I think the most challenging aspect of the straight rhythm is just timing. You're pushing so hard to beat the guy next to you that your head jumps faster than you usually would, which if you don't soak them up or scrub them hard enough, then you're gonna over jump them, which will totally put your whole rhythm off. Hey, triples a third time, and still Pastrana in the lead. You can mess up from the start to the finish because there was so many different sections that were tricky. You had to do it perfect to win it. The 500 two-stroke cannot be matched to the rollers of Pastrana pulls the backflip. The Red Bull Straight Rhythm event last year was such, I would say, a bad thing for me. I realized how old I was, and then I don't feel like I've been out of the sport that long. I still ride all the time, but this whole scrub thing has just completely taken over, and you have these three jumps that kind of separate the sections, and I was losing on singles. I'm not talking about the whoops. I'm not talking about any of the jumps on these stupid vertical singles. I'm losing a second on each one of them. Last year I noticed it came down to the dragon's back and the whoops. The guys that, that weren't scared to commit and hit those things as fast as their bikes would go and, and at that point, you know, it's about halfway down the rhythm and you, you can go pretty fast in the 450, you shift that thing into fourth or fifth and, and they're going pretty good. Probably the hardest part of the race was not focusing on the guy next to you. If you make a mistake, you know, the guy would pull away so you would try to hurry up and gain a lot of time. and. It was hard because you had to be perfect on the rhythm, so you know that part was pretty difficult. But for me, they had the whoop section at the end, so I was able to, to make up a lot of time at the end. The most challenging aspect of the course will definitely be remembering the jumps. I'm actually trying to study it right now, just because last year I had a hard time remembering. You know, there's so many rhythm sections that you're like, did I triple this part? And then you kind of forget. You know, it took a few runs to to memorize it. What is it going to take to be successful at straight rhythm this year? The start. It all starts from the drop of the gate because a bad start can put you right behind two or three bike lanes right out of the hole. You can be won or lost anywhere pretty much. You know, you get a good start, you have a you know decent sized gap, uh, you make the slightest mistake or somebody can just be you know better on certain parts of the track. So you can make up time pretty quick and I think it's going to definitely be for some close racing. You know, whether I'm racing a, the straight rhythm or, you know, a Supercross series or around two barns, I'm, I'm just happy to race again.